parallel and perpendicular to the to the fiber. And the same thing, we can also see it in, uh, or more obviously, um, we can also see it in the cluster cardioids um, that you can clearly see the stripe that corresponds to um, the, um, the helical twisting structures. And when we rotate 90 degrees, such that the stripes is, parallel, uh, is perpendicular to the fiber, to the fluoridation light, um, it pretty much disappears. Um, and this is also quantitatively uh, um, shown in their fluorescent spectra. Uh, the spotted lines indicate within this within the um, um, the tachyoids and what is the the strength of the signal. And it's clearly shown that it's much stronger than the one that is uh, perpendicular to it, indicating that that there is a uh, um, strong fluoridation dependence. Um, so as I said, um, there is the fluorescence um, of the of, of amyloids, but it's usually pretty weak. Um, and we're thinking, well, is there a way that we can make this fluorescence stronger? Um, and we know that um, plasmonic nanoparticles can or and often be used for enhancing uh, such fluorescence mechanisms. So that's what we did. We mix uh, the gold and grass. Whoops. We mix gold and grass in the systems and 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 decide to well let's see what happens. Um, so what we well first of all what we find is that um, the gold and grass tends to concentrate within these tachyoids, and that can also be seen by the bluish tint um, compared to the surrounding hypotopic area. Um, that is indicating that there is a higher concentration of gold and grass within the tachyoids. And when there is a linearly white polarized white light shine on the on the on the pathways, um, there is also um, then the, the the blue tint also shows a polarization dependence. So um, when the um, orientation for when the uh, fibers are more or less parallel to the to the polarization of light, it's blue, and when we rotate ninety degrees, then the blue color disappears. So that's um, essentially agree with what is normally expected in the system that in a different orientation, this is sort of exciting different um, um, polarization or uh, plasmonic source and peaks. So when it's um, parallel in here, it's exciting this uh, very large um, uh, longitudinal mode of the, uh, uh, from the golden rod. Um, therefore, a big portion of the red light is so in transmission mode, you see blue. And when we rotate the sample 90 degrees, then this sort of absorption takes this activated and then the color is rather pale. Um, and so that is a, that was a relatively simpler, uh, simple structure. And we, were, we also find that um, in a more complicated structure involving the helical twisting, um, chiral structure, the bone and the rods can also can still follow this um, this sort of alignment, um, and which can be seen well not very obvious here, but you can also figure um, figure out that there are those blue stripes that are in indicating where the um, the bone and the rods are parallel to the uh, incident polar incident um, polarization of light, and when we rotate at ninety degrees, then those blue stripes disappear. Um, so back to the main story, um, what about the, the fluorescence? Um, so here, well, I'm going to show we did see that there is a strong fluorescence. Uh, and here we, um, I'm showing first um, what we can see for um, tactoids that is made only in the fibers. We can sort of see that, okay, there are these tactoids in here. Um, and then the, the, the spectrum, there, you can see that there are different um, stronger uh, signals from the within the tactoids compared to the sur surrounding backgrounds. Um, but when the image um, under the same condition, the hybrid tactoids consisting both the bone nano rods and the fibers, um, uh, just by eye falling it, it's much, much more, has a lot more contrast. Um, and the, and it is actually indeed true, um, which is reflected on the polarizes spectrum. Um, here, the red line, the red curve, indicates um, the polarizes signal collected from within the sample. 
or from within this, this factoid is much higher than the background, which is indicated by um, this dashed line here. And also, it's also much stronger compared to when we rotate the sample such that the sample is um, perpendicular to the to the um, to the excitation polarization. Um, this um, not only this uh, fluorescence is polarization dependent; it's also wavelength dependent. Um, so moving, uh, so before I was showing um, results from when they used the wavelengths of six ten for thirty three nanometers. And that is closer to the longitudinal um, excitation uh, wavelengths of the glow neurons. And as we move further away from um, from that wavelength, we can see that this oh, um, this uh, uh, this enhancement effect is much uh, is much smaller. So for five fourteen and for four o five, it's um, the fluorescence images are much less pronounced compared to uh, when they use. 633 nanometers of light. Um, the reason for uh, why I um, there is such fluorescence enhancement as I briefly touched is because of the plasmonic effect. Um, and so we did also do uh, numerical simulations, um, and which essentially is showing what the field distribution it would be if we um, when we have this. Uh, laser light shine on the photon cross. So here, this one shows a near field um, sort of uh, distribution of the electromagnetic waves. When the fluoridation of the light is parallel to the small axis of the photon cross, and you can see that um, very close to the surface of the photon cross, there is an order of magnitude of almost five. Um, so that's like 10,000 of stronger um, intensity compared to the incident light. And that explains why, uh, that essentially is saying that um, the uh, fibers, the, the immunoglobal fibers that is close to this, uh, to this uh, uh, gold round will experience a much higher um, excitation light uh, compared to the ones that are, well, are, are, are compared to the ones that um, when the uh, gold down rods are not present. And the same thing when we change the polarization, this sort of enhancement is pretty much gone. Um, and we also did simulations on other wavelengths, essentially showing um, uh, uh, showing the similar um, results. Um, and as we, we, we expect as at 400 uh, or 500 nanometers, um, the, uh, the enhancement is pretty much not there. But if we use the um, wavelengths, the, the laser wavelengths exactly as well as the longitudinal uh, wavelengths and the um, excitation um, or the enhancement would be probably much stronger. Um, and well, uh, because the limitation of the instrument, we didn't do this, but we expect that uh, we'll be able to have better images um, if we use this type of wavelength. Um, so uh, that creates, brings to the conclusion. I've shown that um, the hybrid uh, factors can have indeed shown um, great fluorescence enhancement of the hybrid uh, of of the intrinsic luminescence of the of the uh, and we expect that future in the future this might contribute to the uh, diagnosis or treatment of such um, amyloid mutation diseases. Uh, and can also help to uh, prepare other uh, photonic materials. Um, so with that, I thank you for your attention and also my uh, colleagues back in the case.